everyone, welcome to our first Q&A of the evening. Um, you're watching the virtual open evening tonight for SMB College Group. Um, this is the childcare, early years, um, health and social care and access to HE live q and um, I'm joined by some of my lovely team here. We've got Carol, Claire, Vicky and Linda. And I'm going to hand you over to Carol now, who's going to give us a little bit of an overview of the courses. So over to you, Carol. Hello everybody, my name is Carol Barker and I'm the Director of Curriculum for the Creative and Service Industries. Um, so all the courses in this link um, I direct um, alongside my colleagues are on, online today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the health and social care offer that we can that we have at the SMB group. Um, our health and social care qualifications are covered across both of our campuses, both at Melton and at Stevenson. We offer from level one, level two and level three health and social care um, packages. Level one and level two are both one year courses um, and have a set amount of units, eight units across that one year course. Um, the usual things are safeguarding, working in health and social care sector, growth and development, those kinds of equality and diversity communication, those kinds of subjects. Um, each of those courses are um, assessed by you completing assignment work and that is all graded A to D stars. Um, and then our level three qualification is a set over two years with nine units in the first year, nine units in the second year. The level three provision has got UCAS points and is ideal for anybody that is wishing to transfer and progress on to university uh, at the end of it. So it's a, a natural progression route into those um, access to, into those nursing um, qualifications and healthcare provision qualifications. The level three course, um, as I say, again, is assessed through written assignments um, over the duration and also external assignments and an exam. So in the first year, you would set a 20 hour exam um, and then in the second year, you have a two hour exam and then a 20 hour exam as well um, alongside your internal assessments. Uh, as I say, everything is graded between A and D and each unit will have the UCAS points attached to the unit and the grades and therefore that's how you can gain your entry. Um, life at college is fantastic. Um, we have work experience that also sits alongside those courses. Uh, so you will be out in industry fulfilling those job roles so you really get a really all round experience and helps with employability. Um, course entry requirements will allow you to go into the different courses um, and on our website gives you those entry requirements to go straight into the level three course we are looking for um, the GCSEs uh, in maths and at five GCSEs and maths and English at grades uh, nine to four um, yeah, or in between those and um, to go straight onto the level three. If you don't have your maths and English in there, it really doesn't matter. Then we can offer you the level two or the level one, um, whichever is uh, suitable for your current, uh, your current needs and preferences. And we will have conversations with that. Very conscious of time. So I'm going to pass over to whoever's going next and then I can pick up some questions, um, obviously at the end, if anyone's got specific questions. Thanks, Alex. Alex, I think you're on mute. Sorry, rookie error. Um, <laughs> Linda, do you want to give us a bit more information about childcare, if that's all right, please? Just um, I can... the modules, maybe? <laughs> yes, I, I'm Linda Abbott. I'm a training officer in early years, um, working alongside the lecturers with the, in the early years qualifications. Um, I will don't teach as such, the tutor, tutor's not in today, but I will observe, come out to settings and observe you and do the be able to parts of the early years uh, qualification. Now the FE course, I do know that they do do placements and a lot of it of what Carol said applies to the, the early years as well with the level twos and the level threes. Um, you have to do so many hours uh, in the early years settings as part of it uh, and you do do um, internal exams as well. Can't think of anything else Carol that I need to add to that but I'm sure if there's any questions um, you know we can, we can ask at the end. Lovely thank you and um, we have had a question which is about um, access to HE I think maybe Claire will be able to answer this one. Um, 
what's the difference between doing health and social care and access to HE? Well, the access to HE course is aimed at learners that are 19 plus. So it's for mature learners. I mean, it's more of a fast track. So it's like a one year course that's the equivalent to two A levels that will give you enough UCAS points to get into university. OK, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. So can you tell us a little bit more about the access Absolutely. to HE course? Absolutely. The access to HE course is a a very demanding course. Um, ideally, you really need to know where you want to go and have explored universities prior to coming onto the course. It is aimed at the health professionals. So we do have a wide range of health professions that people have gone on and progressed. So we've even this year we've got a veterinary nurse that's coming on to access to HE. Um, that's the first wow. veterinary nurse I've had. Um, <laughs> we've got had dental nursing paramedics, radiographers, um, adult nursing, paediatrics, mental health nursing. So there's an array of health professions that this course is enables you to get onto. Um, but it's always best to check with your university to check that they are happy um, prior to coming on. The course itself is made up of 60 credits, 30 of which are human biology. So it's very heavily science based. Um, um, and there's a lot of written assignments. You'll do a range of presentations, um, timed assignments. Um, we prepare you for exams as well. So you'll be fully prepared for university. So it's not only the biology, you've also got in there a range of study skills that will support, support your academic writing and help develop those referencing skills that are needed for university. We use the Harvard method, which most universities tend to use. Um, you'll also learn a range of IT skills. So not all adults um, are, know everything about IT. I'm not saying we're going to teach you everything, but we're going to give you all those necessary skills to help you get on and produce a, an assignment to a high standard and that of what's required at university as well. You'll also learn nursing maths. So you'll learn about how to measure medicines um, in a mathematical way. Um, so that you'll be able to have an awareness of how to administer those when you get on to placement in your university. Of course, they will teach you more about that. We'll be doing the basics, but it enables you to build on that knowledge. Um, and then we have some psychology in there and some health studies, which again um, will raise awareness to things like mental health issues, which are huge at the moment. Um, another one's understanding eating disorder. So they're your health studies. And we've also got sociology of health as well, which kind of brings it all together nicely and ties in really well. Um, and I'm very proud to say this year that we've got 100% of our students that have all gained their first choices and going on to their chosen universities. Um, like I say, though, be prepared for it. It is a very demanding course. It's literally working about every three weeks and you have to meet those deadlines. There's no can I have an extension just for the sake of it? You have to have a valid reason. You know, for example, if you're ill or say caring for someone um, and you have to apply in writing for that through the course manager. Um, it is a great course. We have lots of fun at college as well. It's not as strict as right. You're coming into college today. You know, sometimes we'll do a bit more of a blended learning. Today we'll be on teams. I want you to go away and research. And it really works around children as well because the timetable is aimed at mature learners. So we start, we start at 9.45 and continue through till around two o'clock at time. So you're able to drop children off and pick them up from school. You do need to make sure that you've got enough time to study at home as well. Um, and we also need to ensure that you've got IT facilities to work from. So if you haven't, we can help with that. There is a bursary that's available. Um, I think the threshold is 26,000. Please somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But if you've got a household income that is under 26,000, then you can apply for bursary. And we can help with things like childcare and meals and books and obviously IT facilities. You are able to come into college as well and study independently. Um, so it is great and you'll also need books and we do provide you with a book list. So lots and lots of reading on access to HE. It's a great course, a great achievement and it's lovely to watch the journey of the students. 
I think that's about it, really. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we've had a question. Um, Vicky, I'll put this one to you, see if, if that's OK. Um, is the childcare course suitable if you want to be a teacher? Yes, it is. Um, we do also do apprenticeships as well for teaching, if, if that's something that um, be interested in. Also, you'd need to find a placement okay. um, for an apprenticeship. But, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good start, a good grounding if you want to do um, a childcare course. So if someone is thinking about um, doing either a childcare apprenticeship or a teaching apprenticeship, what's the first thing they need to do? They need to, um, if they contact the college, we've got an apprenticeship advisor and then they'll be able to help them. Um, the college do advertise sometimes for apprenticeships with some of our settings, so they can always apply through there as well. Or if they want to try and find their own setting um, and go, go through that route, but I would advise first talking to the college, the apprenticeship advisors for that. Yeah, brilliant, thank you. Um, Carol, will you be able to tell us a little bit more about sort of the modules in um, childcare and also health and social care, if that's all right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So health and social care in the early years, um, two separate courses, but some of their modules do overlap. So um, in, as I said earlier, in health and social care, you have working in health and social care, you have psychology, um, psychology, safeguarding, uh, dementia care. Um, my mind's gone blank and I teach all the time. Um, in childcare, we, um, it's, it's delivered over themes. So we have the certain themes. So health and safety obviously goes across them all. All of legislation goes across everything that we teach. We also have um, numeracy and literacy. We have um, observation skills. We have theorists within the early years. We have communication. We have working with multi-agencies. We have first aid uh, and one of the things uh, is important is the enrichment opportunities we have at the SMB College Group. So all of our study programmes also have lots of guest speakers into their lessons, visits out to um, certain, sorry my dog has just jumped up at me, uh, certain um, visits out. We also go on different trade shows and we have lots of our suppliers come in as well. Um, we do, can do some Makaton training, paediatric first aid, um, lots of additional opportunities to really make our students uh, employable and really ready for that next progression route, be it into employability uh, and employment or onto that um, next step, either into the next level up or into um, university, as Claire has alluded to earlier. Okay, thank you. Um, I can answer this one. Um, Jane has asked, if there are any places available for this year and yes there are you can apply on our website um, there are links all over the open day pages um, or you can just go to our regular website and you'll see some links on there to apply as well so once you've applied um, you'll go that will go through to our admissions team and they'll invite you for an interview on the phone and then um, the courses are starting quite soon so I'd recommend that you get that in as soon as possible thank you so we always get quite a lot of questions about work experience, uh, where you can do that, when you need to find a placement, that sort of thing. Um, who's the best person to answer that one? Is it you again, Carol? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. So work experience um, in health and social care. If you're doing a level two course, you need to be doing 35 hours. If you're doing a level three health and social care course, it's 75 hours in the first year and then 100 in the second. Um, for child care, um, it's 260 hours at level two and 363 hours per year at level three. Now, all of the um, we, we work alongside you to help you find um, placements. Um, obviously, that is on a non-college day. And therefore, if you don't live in Melton or you don't live close to uh, the Stevenson campus, then um, we try and help you find a placement near to home. 
um, so you're closer to home on those one or two days a week. Um, it can be in any kind of setting. Um, so we have got for childcare, we have got obviously our day nurseries. You can have a setting with a childminder as long as it's a registered childminder. So in a school, because for childcare, there are different age ranges and so many hours that you need to do for each each age range. So in childcare, they tend to do one or two placements per year um, just so they can get all of their age ranges in and the same in the second year for those. In health and social care, we have people that are at youth groups. We have children, people that are in early year setting working with special needs students. We've offered placements within our own foundation department before. We try and tailor your work experience to where you would like to be in your end goal. So for some of our health and social care students that want to be midwives, um, as much as we would love to place them in our local and in our hospitals, unfortunately, it's really hard to get into those settings. So we look at doing some work in short start alongside health visitors um, or even into um, you know, youth centres and working with different groups of um, adults um, because of the communication skills and that working in partnership uh, with some of the other areas. I, I had a mid, uh, somebody that's gone on to mid midwifery this year um, and she did some of her placements actually in a in a care home um, to to get a really vast experience and to be working with a multitude of different um, organisations within that that go into there. And she still got a placement um, at in a, at a mid, for midwifery. So um, we work alongside. What I suggest and we say to all of our students is have a look in your local area and come to us. You can make contact to see if they are taking students and then come to us with a list of where you would like to go and we will be help you recommend and get in contact also with those providers. The, the perfect idea is to be out in placement by October half term. Um, so that will be the aim. One of the things, though, obviously not wishing to put a damper on things with the COVID, because um, we're all trying to, to carry on and life goes on. But there's something we do need to be wary um, is that some placements are not happy to take students if they've not had their vaccinations. So obviously at the moment, there's lots on going on in the press about 16 and 17 year olds having vaccinations. Um, and we do know that some of our settings have put that regulation in. So again, uh, during enrolment and in our induction uh, week, we will be talking about that. So um, it may be something just to put on your radars now that um, the placement that you really want to go to might say, unless you've had your, your vaccination because of the COVID um, pandemic at the moment. So um, yeah, we, we've still got a little work to go with our with our placements, but I just wanted to mention that um, if, because I know now that quite a few 16 and 17 year olds, uh, I think it, the, the, is it 44% um, now have had it across the country or something like that. So just something to bear in mind because placement is a requirement. So if you don't do placement, then you can't fulfill your qualifications. So we've just got to, to try and hit that, that middle bit um, in there. So hopefully that's helped, but also just flagged the COVID situation. Yeah, Normally our students go out on placement during the week, but also to help, we might be putting you out on block placement. So instead of coming into college for three days a week, you will just spend that whole week out in placement. And placements are liking that because obviously you can do lateral flow testing on your first morning and on the days that you're out. So again, it's just a, another way of getting around that. So some of our placements go out two days a week, but um, we are looking um, to change that into block placements as well. So we can ensure that everybody has got the criteria. Um, and yeah, get looking around for where you'd like to go on your placements. And when we see you in the next couple of weeks, we will be there with you. Um, as Linda um, always says, she, she, she also will be helping. We've got a massive list of the providers that we use across all the sections. Um, so um, we'll get you placed. Um, but if you've got a specific placement or you've already been offered a placement, then please bring that to us and we'll help you set that up. Thank you. There is a uniform that does need to be purchased as well. So again, in induction and enrolment, all of that information has gone out. And I know the, the welcome packs have got that information in there already as well. So um, hopefully that's answered that question. 
Yes, just touching on the welcome packs, they were sent out today. So hopefully um, people will receive them either tomorrow or the start of next week. And like Carol said, there's lots of information there and a few goodies as well that you can um, just to welcome you to the college. Lovely. Um, Linda and Vicky, one of you could answer this one. Um, if someone's not sure whether they want to do um, an apprenticeship or a full time course, what, what's the best thing for them to think about? What would you recommend? Maybe, maybe giving us a call and having a chat. And then we can see where it is that you know you, you're perhaps best place to do um and then we, we can always advise and guide you with that yeah is is it better to do an apprenticeship um or a full-time course if you think you want to go on to university is there a preference there um yes Yes, because mm. if I could just jump in here, yeah. if you want to go on to university, you need to have your UCAS points and there aren't UCAS points attached to the apprenticeship route. So therefore it would need to be um, it would need to be the FE route. Um, obviously, the biggest difference between coming in an FE route or an apprenticeship is an apprenticeship. You have to be working and employed so um, we have got lots of vacancies um, from our local providers that are all out on the website at the moment but that's the key part so what tends to happen is if you're unsure and you haven't got that job lined up at the moment then quite a few of our students do start on the FE route um, and then once that when they get an opportunity they can transfer across um, if you are uh, go along the apprenticeship route thinking that something might pop up and then we get starting into the term it may be then that you can't come back into the FE route because we've done too much of our delivery so we I would always recommend um, if you haven't got that apprentice uh, that apprenticeship set up and um, ready to go please don't miss the opportunity to join the 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 FE side of things uh, and come this way and you can always transfer out uh, and once our students get into placements we have also had successful placements where they have actually been taken on then as an apprentice within and again they transfer out but they still do their apprenticeship with with Vicky and, and Linda um so yeah don't 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 wait for that apprenticeship and then be ringing me in October and seeing if we can come back into the the FE world because sadly you'll have missed too much so um, I'm a firm believer don't put all your eggs in one basket um, and you know enroll on a course and then we, we can transfer you another thing that's important to say is if you're enrolling on um, a course we have got up to six weeks on probation and therefore if we feel that you're struggling let's say you come onto a level three course and you're struggling with that course for whatever reason please do come and talk to us and we will talk to you because we still we can have um, you know move people from courses either up or you know onto the level three or um on from a level three down to a level two um so all of the needs are are, are discussed with it with all of our students um so if you do go on to a different course and you sort of think oh this isn't for me please talk to us and then we've got the opportunity to to transfer you to a different area um or that different course Thank you. Um, we've had a couple of questions actually. Um, do you need to wear your uniform on enrolment day? No. Nope. Just smart casual clothes that you can yeah. that you can learn in. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah, even in normal college days, you don't have to wear your 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 uniform. Um, yeah, you, your placement uniform is just for your placement days. Yeah. Okay. Um, or so unless we're going to do we're having sometimes certainly in early years we have stay in play sessions where we invite our local nurseries into college and we actually have a room that we set up as a, a nursery then we would say you need to have a um you need to have a uniform on that day but normally um you don't need to yeah there is there is a kit list on the website and will be included in your induction pack as well for other bits but it's mainly just like the normal things you'd expect like pens and paper and um, things like that as well um, Jade has asked, what is childcare mostly based on? Um, I think, who can answer that one? Sorry, <laughs> Carol, it might be you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's it based on? It's based on childcare and development from, from a, from a, the, uh, the whole perspective. So we look from, from, not from conception, 
right the way up to seven, but the focus is on early years. So naught from conception to five. And it's literally all of the different areas, the different stages, the different theories, how we learn, how we play with children, how we observe children, how we move them to the next milestone, um, all about their development um, alongside play what is play how does it look like how do we encourage children to play socially how do we teach them socially to be um part of the community and the society it literally covers everything um from the theorists as i say to the different play techniques to observing children numeracy and literacy um or everything <laughs> lovely that's perfect thank you um, that's actually all we've got time for now, um, but thank you everybody for your, your questions. If anyone does have any more questions, because um, I can see a few more coming in, um, you can send us an email, the email address is on the, um, on the website, um, or you can message us on social media as well, and the team are available this evening and, and um, tomorrow as well to answer anything you might have. So lovely. Thank you very much everyone and have a, have a great evening. Thank you.